Hey, my friend, how's it going? This is Jerome Shaw, creator of the Open Palm Podcast. Wanted to come to you with a message and talk to you a little bit more about this breatharian living, this liquidarian living, and talk about actually how I went, how I jumped all the way from eating flesh, right? Eating meat, eating flesh, full carnivore, full blown to liquid to liquidarian wow <laughs> so if you can imagine you know i needed i need a change in my life you know they say drastic times call for drastic measures you know desperate times call for desperate measures that's what i needed in my life i was desperate right i lacked everything that i could think of and i kept telling myself that i was in the victim mindset i, I had a victim mentality you know i blamed things but I felt that I had to finally own up. I had to finally take ownership and gain responsibility over my life and accountability because accountability is a superpower. You can always count on yourself. You can't always count on other people. So when you realize that the only person you're responsible for is you and the only person you can truly change is you, then you got to change yourself. So that's what I told myself. I got to change me. I had to change the narrative, the story in my mind. And the best way that I found to do it was changing by what I put in my body. You know, there's a person named Ralph Smart, wonderful gentleman, wonderful human being, light worker doing wonderful things on the planet, has a YouTube channel called Infinite Waters, diving deep once again. And he talks about how peace begins on the plate. Well, I found this firsthand when I started fasting, but as you can imagine, this was no easy task. You know, I was raised, as I tell you on this channel, on macaroni and cheese and hot dogs. I was raised eating, you know, all types of flesh. And I say flesh very specifically in this video, uh, not to sound like I'm eating, um, you know, a dead person, but we might as well be, you know, we might as well be scavengers like vultures. If we really ask ourselves the question of, we are eating dead carcasses. We are eating dead flesh, dead meat. This is, these are animals that have died right? They're packaged in these nice little packages with labels on them. But in essence, this is dead meat. You know, you think of a lion would pass, a, they say a lion would pass a dead cow sitting on a highway, right? They're not a vulture, they're not a scavenger. You know, they hunt for their food, right? They're not going to eat something that is just dead sitting there with flies buzzing around it. But that's exactly what we do. So we have really gone away from uh, how we used to be in ancient times and ancient civilizations that we're not eating and consuming all this meat, I don't believe. So uh, you will do your own research, I'm sure, but this is just letting you know my story to encourage you that you can do it. You know, I was eating rotisserie chickens, whole rotisserie chickens, I'm telling you. Uh, you know, hot wings by the pound, like pounds, pounds of hot wings I was eating. I was on the board uh, in Pluckers, this place out here in Texas for hot wings. I was on the wall of flame for eating 25 of their hottest wings with, you know, jalapeno wings and whatnot, just, you know, just spicy, just doing all sorts of things to my insides. I have to shout out my body for keeping me alive through against all odds. But I went from eating flesh. And once again, I say flesh very intentionally because people shy away from that word. They want to say meat, but saying meat is another thing that essentially is desensitizing us, right? Getting us away from thinking that plant-based is something icky or something disgusting. There's people that look at something green, like a green juice, and they're reviling in disgust. They're like, I would never drink that, right? There's people that would, um, you know, look at broccoli and say, oh, that's disgusting. That's so nasty, right? People that look at people who eat uh, vegan and they just don't understand them, right? They say, well, why, where are you going to get your protein, right? Where are you going to get this stuff? You have to get it from meat. But think about it, right? You watch a documentary like on Netflix called The Game Changers. Watch this documentary, The Game Changers. It is a game changer uh, where you see one of the strongest people in the world able to lift multiple people on his shoulders. And people asked him, you know, how did you get to be as strong as an ox? And he told them simply, you know, have you ever observed what oxes eat? You know, they're not eating other oxes, right? They're not eating other oxen. They're eating the grass. They're eating plants. They're plant-based, right? So when you realize that we've got it all backwards, you know, where we're getting our protein, where we're deriving it, we're getting it from a tertiary source, a, a third source, you know, not even a secondary source, right? 
the animals are getting it from the plants, the plants are getting it from the sun. You can skip, you can cut all that out and go straight to the source, right? So this is just letting you know that um, when you speak about meat or really what it is, flesh, people shy away from this. People don't say, they don't say beef. Or, I mean, they don't say they're eating cows, right? They say they're eating beef. We don't say we're eating pigs. We say we're eating pork, right? We don't say we're eating, you know, we say we're eating poultry or chicken instead of, you know, saying what we're really eating, which is dead flesh, dead carcasses. So uh, I had to digress for a moment because I just wanted to get that out here. But um, if you found this channel, you're already in the right place. You know what you're doing and you know that you are probably called to this way of living for some reason. So I hope that I'm inspiring you in some way to continue on your journey. But I went all the way from eating flesh to liquid. And it was one of the best things that I ever did in my entire life. By cutting out all that dense food, my body had less to digest. So I had more energy for my mind, more energy for my body less food on my body, less things for my body to take care of and digest and get rid of all those toxins that were penetrating my, you know, my bloodstream going straight to me, you know, giving me all sorts of different ailments and illnesses. And it's been a long time since I've gotten sick, guys, like a long time since I've had a cough, had a cold, right? Had the flu, right? It's been a long time. <laughs> And I'm telling you, you know, it's been a long time since I've, you know, there's a correlation. It's been a long time since I've gotten sick, a long time since I've been in the bed, a long time since I've had a day where I didn't, when I couldn't work on my business. But it's also been a long time since I've eaten flesh. It's been a long time since I've microwaved anything, put anything in the microwave. It's been a long time, you know. So there are a lot of things that I did when I went on a liquidarian diet when I cut out all solid food and I went straight to coconut water, juice, condensed soups, you know, things of that nature uh, to change my way of being. And remember this, my friend, a millionaire said this, in life, nothing changes until you change. But once you change, everything changes. So, Thank you for listening, my friend. This has once again been Jerome Shaw. For more inspirational messages, find it on The Open Palm Podcast. Grab the new book now out on Amazon called Finding Inner Peace by Jerome Shaw. And you will find that uh, link to that book in the episode description of this episode. Thank you for watching, my friend. Be blessed. Have a wonderful day or night wherever you are. And as always, take care. We'll catch you again. Much love. Mm -hmm.